Hey guys, welcome back to our third and final preview video on the upcoming Blazing Deserts DLC. Now mm. keep in mind everything that you see in this video and also in the other preview videos is still um, taken from the beta Holy phase shit, mate, of the it's a game rifle. and might change until the release. So anyways, let's uh, jump into it and take a look at the uh, new gunpowder weapons that uh, will be introduced with the DLC. I'm liking the artwork. Now the gunpowder weapons are something that the ingenious scientists of the southern city-states came up with and um, they are inspired by very very early gunpowder weapons uh, from from asia or, or, or china and are not comparable to any modern firearms like a uh, like a rifle or something so they fill a role of something that we don't have in the game so far and that is a ranged uh, area of effect weapon so there are two gunpowder based weapons that the player can use and there's the third one that uh, you will see <laughs> later in this video it's a fucking new fire lance this is a very crude <laughs> device because it just has a explosive charge um tied to a spear and this charge uh, historically was filled with all kinds of different uh, goodies like grape shot or uh, something flammable or even poisonous fumes but we in this game have the one with the with the, um, the fire blast coming out of it so this is a one-time use it one grants time use, the uh, ignite skill and that fires uh, the fire lens over two tiles and burns everything that it hits so this can only be used once in a fight and is reloaded after the fight and once the once it's discharged there is only a spear left that you can use like a regular spear but because of the added weight uh, of the charge, uh, it's not capable of um, uh, using this the spear wall. So, and that is <laughs> the first one, it's a, the fire lance. So this is a, a one-off thing that uh, you can employ to just give you a little edge in combat. And uh, the second one, which is a more real ranged weapon, is the handgun. So the handgun is also a very, very early gunpowder based weapon. It's basically a stick with a sort of mortar um, at the top and it is loaded with a charge, explosive charge like black powder and also um, small pellets like gravel and shrapnel. It uh, fires a cone. It's got a huge damage range, 35 to 75, effective against unarmored enemies. Pretty much no damage ignore. That's um. Mm. that it doesn't have a very long range and also can hit multiple targets now um, I think I'm gonna advance a little bit and then we're gonna wait for the enemy to line up now the handgun is um, is uh, rechargeable so you can reload it in combat and here's another one let's move them up just to show the effect of it uh, it, it can be a bit tricky to use because the single target damage is not that high compared to a bow or crossbow But you can if you're lucky hit multiple tiles at the same time This makes for a very effective weapon, especially when combined with perks like overwhelm or fearsome Fearsome boys fearsome's so alive. The nomads are moving out of the camp a little bit So as you can see here, they have a, a walled in fortification that we have to storm it's also something new uh, from the DLC. <laughs> and <a> meta. <laughs> the southern city states. So the, the nomads that we have seen in the last video as well, they uh, don't use firearms. Mace jewelers, boys. This, this guy's a legend. But the city states do. And once you enter the new late game crisis, the Holy War, you will, if you choose to side with the northerners, you will have to fight against um, lots of gunpowder based weapons. Let's uh, just quickly jump through these turns so that we can see the weapons in effect we got a mod for that i can move up here and still fire it so the handgun as you can see uh, costs uh, three action points to shoot okay. so it's not that much but then you have to reload it like a crossbow so it's basically out of business for one turn it takes quite a while to reload and with these little what? um sword what? Icons, you can you see that six tiles see where it's where the shots are landing 
can see that it hits a six what tile the fuck? area. And also you can target ground. So I could sh shoot here and then hit the guys behind it. Uh, let's fire in right into the mass of enemies. And um, it, it's not a very armor breaking weapon. It doesn't have a high armor effectiveness, but it still does decent damage. As you can see here, the armored guy and also this guy. What is didn't this? Have, uh, hardly had any armor, got instantly killed. And the others did quite well against the damage. So um, I spec this uh, brother with overwhelm. So he applies it to all the target that that are hit. So that, that can be very very helpful. So now the skills have changed. He that is reload fucking skill insane. That six action points. So next turn he has to reload the handgun. <laughs> and here you can see it again. It has to be reloaded. So wait, let's wait, wait. jump over. So you can't, I don't think you do a frenzy turn with it. You can do a frenzy turn if you're loaded. Because it's 6 AP reload, 3 AP shoot. Shoot, shoot, kill, get frenzy, reload, shoot again. Over to the uh, other firearm. That, uh, Every the so other often you can get a weapon. frenzy turn. Let's say that it is this one. Now, sorry, it's not this one. It's the, um, the fire lance. Just a second. And let's quickly do, jump through the nomads so we can get the brother with the with the fire lance up. The fire lance is basically just to give you a little edge in combat, and it's not intended to be a main weapon. The gunpowder weapons are also very helpful against beasts because they usually don't have a lot of armor, and uh, they are known to be afraid of fire, as everybody knows. Anyways, let's head over to um, to our guy Bakut. It's going to be good against the unarmed enemies. These but... guys, there he is. And now he can move up. So the Fire Lens has okay. a two tile area of effect and it's uh, only on the uh, adjacent tile and can be used in close mm -hmm. combat. So what you want to do is that you want these guys at the side of your line move up. Yeah, th that's a good point. Quick hand meta. It's going to be quick hands to this. Like, weren't they originally scaling with... Um... Damage was going to scale with uh, uh, ranged attack. That's not the case now. They've changed that. So this doesn't scale with ranged attack anymore because the initial idea for the handgun was to scale it with ranged attack and that ranged defense would drop the damage. But it looks like it's changed. But you're just going to quick hands boom. Like applying six stacks of overwhelm is insane. That's pretty cool. I don't know how well it would go against armor, but it does 35 to 75 damage. That's a high damage range. And then line up the shot to uh, hit two guys or two enemies Boom. in a straight line. So maybe we can finish. It sounds cool. We can finish off this guy. Uh, it sounds with cool. The shot. There you go. And now you can see that the that the charge is spent of the weapon, and it can now only be used in, like a regular spear. Yeah, Jewel, so boys. these are the new gunpowder weapons, and um, we made sure that. All of the um, community who are uh, very concerned about adding gunpowder weapons to Battle Brothers um, will see that these are balanced and also put in the game in a way where they don't um, I hope so. take over the, the tactics and they just add another variety of weapon uh, to the game without making the game center around it. So now Hopefully, we take a look at the new throwable pots that we added to the game. Hopefully they're difficult yeah, to get. band of mercenaries is attacking a nomad camp and we will be using the uh, pots to showcase their effect now note that i equipped my men with a lot more pots i think fatigue for the hand cannon was negative 14. but we'll continue than you will usually have in a fight like this so let's jump right into it this is the fire pot and it will explode on impact and set seven tiles ablaze with fire for two rounds and everybody standing in this fire will receive damage. So this will also cause the new um, burning injuries that um, can also be inflicted by the gunpowder weapons. As you can see here, it has a three tile range that goes for all the pots and a seven tile impact radius. Now this is very handy to also damage the enemy, but if you want to block their area of approach for them or um, deny them an area, it's also very handy to throw this at the enemy. Here That's goes. nice. As you can see, all of these received instant damage. And also all these tiles uh, are set ablaze. 
So let's head over to the next. As you can see the nomads are fighting real hard. Now, this is another fire pot that we can throw over here. This guy just attacked him through sand. Just for good measure. And now we take a look at the second pot and that is a smoke pot. Now, when exploding or when thrown, this will cover seven tiles in a dense smoke. As you can see again over here, it, it has the same mechanic. And the smoke has various effects. Now, the smoke increased the, increases the range defense by 100%, lowers range skill for, by 50%, and also um, oh. will disable the zone of control. So if you throw that somewhere, you can instantly and without any... My general opinion for area of effect weapons is that they could be potentially very broken. Very broken. We've already got AOE in the terms of hammers and swords. But that's melee contact. These are throwable, so you can put them literally anywhere. It's very easy to maximize the AoE, so I don't know. Um, 20 fatigue to throw the pot, 5 AP. So that's good for a duelist. Um, I, like, I like that the, the throw smoke pot extinguishes fire and miasma, because it lets you control the battlefield. I think that's a good mechanic. The um, attacks of opportunity. Uh, leave the zone of control. So this can be very handy for a quick um, uh, retreat. For example, if I throw this here, all my brothers would be able to retreat uh, from combat. So that can be very helpful. Another very important effect of the smoke pot is that it will extinguish any other area of effect or tile effects like uh, the miasma or the fire. So let's quickly throw this over here just to showcase uh, what it looks like. And there goes the smoke. Now we can take a look at the third and final pot that we have in the game. And that is a flash pot. So when this is thrown and explodes, it um, goes off with a bright flash and a loud bang and disorients all the targets in the area, giving them mm. the dazed status effect for two turns. AoE dazed so this is a very helpful debuff that wow. you can cause on the enemy. And it dazes. Let's throw it over here. Oh shit! And catch it. Status effect for. It only says days. We got to try so and look for it. Very helpful. Debuff Maybe he reveals how much the days is. The enemy. Let's throw it over here. And another important feature of this is that he's not going to show us. Um, oh, has oh. a uh, very nice synergy. I don't know with the new weapons that we have in the game, and that is the Katal dagger. Because the, this dagger is used by the boys. assassins and <laughs> it inflicts a third more damage and uh, also does uh, ignores additional 20% uh, armor. When the target is dazed, stunned, net, sleeping um, or incapacitated in any other way. So this is a very nice combination to pull off to daze a target and then um, use this dagger. Of course, you also have to hit it um, because uh -huh. Tala just missed his <laughs> swing. Anyways, that is the new potions and all of these potions will be either uh, you can craft them from materials that you can gather from from beasts or you can buy them at the at the alchemist. And um, so you can get your hands on mm -hmm. them in the south and they are quite expensive, but they will tip the battle in, in your favor in a crucial moment. So it's always good to have some ready. So the pots cost 500 to 600 crowns. So they are expensive. So it'll be a late game sort of thing, but you'll have one or two early on, I guess. Quite expensive. But I like that. I don't know how we're going to make them. We have to get gunpowder somehow. Maybe that's from the new monster. Now here we are in a fight against the southern city. Boys. It's here. The big badonkadonk. States, and they are holding a holy site and we want to take it from dude them. that's toxic it's in fortification now, in the holy war late game crisis we decided to um, go with the northern noble houses and fight the southern city states but you can just as well side with the city states against the northerners now um, let's take a look at the troops they are fielding so first off they have the conscripts that is 
-hmm. their basic infantry that they are employing, usually with one-handed weapon and shield. But some of them do carry the fire lance that They're I nimble. showed earlier. They're nimble. In the back line, they have gunners that use the hand gunner uh, for ranged support, and they don't have any other archers. Please but don't tell the me. The hand gunner is, of course, very different from normal archers. Don't have overwhelm. Um, also, can be very effective if you clump up too much. They will land some really good shots. Also, they have officers. These uh, are equivalent to the Northern Knights, basically, extremely heavily armored, usually with two handed weapons, and they also keep the morale up of surrounding troops. Now, we have two very unique um, enemies here as well, and that is for one, the Assassin. Now, those Assassins are lightly armored, and uh, to make up for that, they have the Nimble and Dodge perks, and those make them quite resilient. They will also use the pots that I showed earlier um, in attacking you and try oh to circle around the sides and stab you from the back. And finally, we have the third gunpowder weapon that I've been talking about, and that is the mortar. Now, this is like a really big and massive machine, so it cannot move on the battlefield. And it's it a cannon. cannot be destroyed, but <laughs> it is operated by two engineers, and those can, of course, be killed or driven off. And then the mortar is useless. So you will see in a second how the mortar um, behaves in a fight and how it is employed uh, to put pressure on the player to dislocate and uh, keep moving. Now let's advance a little bit, cautiously of course, because I don't want to get into the range of the, um, of the hand gunners too early. But I have a shield wall, it's always a good idea. And advance slowly. Here we go. So he's indoming boys. This, this is gonna fuck time. him. <laughs> and wait for them to move. Now the southern city states. This is a very small troop. They have, of course, uh, way larger units uh, that you he's have to scared. fight. He's scared, and um, they can be extremely dangerous to overcome. Now you can see the assassin is already pulling out his, um, uh, his the pot that he's about to throw. They have quick hands. Uh, the, the defensive artillery is firing, but as uh, this guy is uh, also has the dodge ability at the dodge uh -huh. perk, he's very hard Wait. to hit. Just Wait, slowly... I just see something. This guy's got dodge indom. Okay, baiting it. So the strategy is to bait out the shot. Move up. The gunners, uh, the engineers. You can see here. He acted first, boys. He acted first, so it's no overwhelm. The overwhelm only applies when you act first. Operating the mortar that will fire shortly. It always takes a little while to get it ready to, for combat. In the meanwhile, they decide to oh. sally forth from the defenses and attack me in the open field. I have um, a Radwan ready here with a pot to throw as well. Now the officer is moving up. I have to be very cautious of this guy. That was the mortar firing. What happened? Now he is firing in a very high arc, so the impact will not be immediate, but will be delayed by one turn. You can see on these red markers where the, um, the ball will come down and hit next turn. So now I have time to move out of the way and, uh, and avoid getting uh, crushed by the... Right. So this is like um, World of Warcraft raid mechanics. Basically. But these were auto-hit weapons. So the, the handguns used to be auto-hit weapons, but it appears they're dice rolling. I did I did explain that I think auto-hit weapons are bad to do damage. So they've, they've definitely changed the design of the gun, but maybe this isn't so bad because you can just step out of it. So if you're smart and you use weight turn appropriately, you can just pretty much avoid that. The mortar shell. Let's move out of the way. I can just move here just to show you the effect uh, that it will have next turn. Uh, yeah, nuke mechanic, of interest. yeah. Move out of, here, over, out of the way here. And brace with a shield wall. Push an enemy into now the area, that's cool. I like trying that. trying to enter the fight as well. That's good. And this can be extremely dangerous when your guys are pinned in a location and you cannot move out of zone of control and then the mortar is firing on your back line. So in that case, it can be very helpful to use a smoke pot that negates all the zones of control. So then you can quickly ah. move, out, move out of the way. Of course, you also can use the footwork perk. Let's step, okay? 
Oh work. Ew. And there was the um, the uh, pot thrown also there as well from the Jesus. assassin. Now all all of these are dazed. So when he uses the, um, the whole death blow ability on my men, uh, they will do a lot of damage. Now this guy got out a fire pot, and I really don't want him to throw that. Let's stun the officer first. I think that he's the highest threat. Well done. So this is the pole maze that I used. And it can be used to deliver a stun over one tile of distance, and that can be extremely helpful. The next very powerful new weapon. Very powerful, boys. Meta. He likes it. A pole mace, yes. A pole mace. Two tile so now pole they mace. Are reloading the mortar again, and the gunners are firing into our back lines, and they're instantly routing my first warrior over here. That's very bad. Let's dish out some more damage. I think he's about to go down soon. Well, let's try to knock out that officer over here. And we stun the assassin. Well, well done. So he won't throw that nasty fire pot into my back line. Now you've seen the impact of the mortar shell that has a hit over here. And uh, it hit a couple of my guys, did some decent damage, but it's not mainly for damage, it's mostly for demoralizing the enemy. Oh, okay. And let's take a quick look at uh, it doesn't the do effect much. that it's caused, because everybody hit by it will have the shell shocked effect. And that basically uh, reduces all right your values, uh, all your it's stats not doing by much. about 10%. And that can really, really um, handicap your ability to fight back, especially if there are two mortars, for example and you cannot move oh, out of the way, the then these will wear you down, just like the hand guns. Can you find a timestamp for that, please, Sheep? Which are also area of effect weapons. Um, can be quite dangerous and whittling you down bit by bit. So this uh, is a quick overview, overview over the southern um, city uh, troops that you will be fighting. And we will um, stop the video here. And very soon you will be able to see more blazing deserts as we are starting to um, lift the embargo on the um, press versions. You will be able to see your favorite streamer uh, streaming the game uh, coming this weekend. Kappa. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Abyss. <laughs> let's let's go hunting. The, um, Handicap your ability to fight back a special officer over here. So just before he's shot, and we stun the assassin. He scrolled over days. So he won't throw that nasty fire pot into my back line. Now you have seen the impact of the mortar shell that has a hit over I miss here, it? and uh, it hit a couple of my guys. Did some decent damage, but it's not mainly for damage. It's mostly for demoralizing the enemy. And let's take a quick look at uh, the effect. Days is 25%, boys. There we are. So it's nerfed by 10. That makes sense. I'm going to be sad. It's, um... Like 5% probably would have been too small and 10% is probably about right. There we go. See how Mace is probably too impactful. It's kind of weird. Like it, the handgun seems to do more than the mortar. Hmm. I don't know if the mortar is impactful enough. I know that might sound crazy, but... There we are. I don't think they are enabling the usage of the cannon for the player. I am pretty sure that it's only going to be part of a contract in the Holy War. They said the assassins were going to be part of a contract in the Holy War or something. They were going to be contracts where you see the assassins. Um, but things can change. Sorry, boys. Uh, I think I just lost my save file.
I'm pretty sure I just lost my save file. Like, what the fuck? I had to crash the game. <laughs> Adds mon reactions. Hey! <laughs> uh, my game just crashed. I'm pretty sure I lost it, boys. Come on, man. Is this it? Is this it? It might be it. Got him.